different types of cryptography. Now, the first type of cryptography I'm going to talk about is symmetric cryptography. And by symmetric cryptography, I mean that the key is the same for encrypting or decrypting. So I use the same key whether I am encrypting the data or decrypting the data. One of the things about symmetric key cryptography is that they use a shorter key length than for asymmetric cryptography, which I'll get into a couple of minutes. It's also faster than asymmetric, and you can use algorithms like DES or AES, as those are both symmetric key cryptography algorithms, and you can use a utility like AES script. Uh, let me just demonstrate how symmetric key cryptography works. So for this, we can use a tool called AES script. So in AES script is actually available for Linux and Windows and Mac, all the systems. So I'm using it on the Windows one and I'm using the console version. So first of all, I have a text file called text.txt. So let me just show that to you. So we, as you guys can see, yeah, I have this thing called text.txt. Now to do text.txt, all I, let me just show what text.txt contains. So as you guys can see, it has a sentence called the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So that's the sentence that has all the alphabets in the English language rather. So now we are going to try and encrypt it. So we can use something like AES or DES because both of them are symmetric key ciphers, symmetric key algorithms rather. So we are using AES in this case. So what we're going to do is say AES script. We're going to encrypt it and we're going to use the password of, let's say, um, Pokemon. So we're going to call it Pokemon and we're going to do text.txt. We're going to encrypt that file. So now we have encrypted that file. Now let's go see. We must be having a new file. So this is called text.txt.aes. So that is our encrypted file. And this is what we would generally send over the network if we are sending it to anybody. So let's assume the, uh, the person who's received it also knows our encryption algorithm. I mean encryption algorithm and the key that goes along with it. So let's try to decrypt it now. Now before I decrypt it, let me just show you what an encrypted message looks like. So this is what the ciphertext looks like. Type AES, no, no text dot txt dot AES. So yeah, as you guys can see, the Windows console can't really read everything, but if I were to go here, I would just go into the file and just ever notepad plus plus. You'll see that it's a bunch of crap. You really can't make out anything. What is being made here? We can't really decipher much. So that's the point of using encryption. Now, if you were to decrypt it, all we have to do is AES crypt. Uh, we're trying to decrypt. We're trying to give the password is going to be, what was the password? Pokemon. Okay, so, and we're going to try and decrypt text.txt.aes. Let's DIR that again. Okay, so that just decrypts our message for us. So this is how you would use AES script for encryption and decryption. So that just decrypts it. And that's how you would use symmetric key encryption to encrypt a file for this example. Symmetric key uses the either a stream cipher or a block cipher and the differences between stream or block ciphers is that block takes a block of bits at a time and it's a fixed length. So for example, 64 bits, if I were to use a block cipher with 64 bits, I would need to take in 64 bits before I could start encrypting. Now, if I didn't have 64 bits to encrypt, I would have to fill it with padding in order to get up to 64 bits a stream cipher. On the other hand, it will encrypt a bit at a time, so it doesn't matter how many bits you've got. You don't need to have some multiple of the block length in order to encrypt without padding. And another type of cryptography is asymmetric. Now, asymmetric, as you would expect, uses two different keys. And that's where we have public key and private key. Asymmetric key cryptography uses a longer key length and it also has more computation and the encryption process is slower with a symmetric key encryption. And the encryption process is slower than with a symmetric key encryption. One of the uses for symmetric key is for signing documents or emails, for example, where I would have the private key sign something and the public key would be used to verify a signature. And another reason for using asymmetric key encryption is to ensure that you got it from who actually sent it. Since you've got two keys, you always know who the other end of the equation is. Where with symmetric key, since it's just one key, if you can intercept the key, you can decrypt and also encrypt messages. And so if somebody can figure out the key, you can break into a communication stream using symmetric key encryption. So asymmetric gives you the advantage of ensuring that the other end is who the other end says and they are since they're the only ones who should have the private key and in this particular instance in practice however however hybrid encryption models tend to be used and that's 
where you would use asymmetric encryption to encrypt asymmetric session keys. So basically, you encrypt the message that you are sending using uh, symmetric key encryption. And then you, when you're exchanging the key with somebody else, you use asymmetric key encryption. So this is going to be a slower process. You probably won't want to use it for smaller files in order to do that. Fortunately, the file example that I have is a smaller one. So I'm going to try and generate a key right now. So for this, we have to head over to our Ubuntu system. So let's see. Let me show you how public key encryption actually works. And we are going to first create a key. So let me just clear this out for you. So first of all, let's create a file. And let's call that text.txt. Now, if you see, we are going to edit text.txt to have some file. So we'll have some text in it. So there seems to be a warning with the GTK. I'll just use echo instead. So now let's see if that is in our file. Okay, so let me just show you how asymmetric key encryption or public key cryptography works. So first of all, we need a text file. So let me see. Do we have a text file? So there seems to be a text.txt. So let's see what this text.txt says. So it says that this is a random text file. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a public key first. So I'm going to use OpenSSL for doing this. So we go OpenSSL and we are going to use it with RSA. So we're trying to generate a key. So gen RSA and we're going to use des3 to use this and we're going to output it into a file called private.key. So we are also going to be using a 4096 bit. So this is going to be our private key. So this will create a private key using RSA algorithm. So let it work its way out. So first of all, it's asking me for a passphrase now. So since you can protect your keys with a passphrase, so I'm just going to use my name. OK, so now we see if we ls and we have a private dot key, I guess. Yep. So we have this private dot key. Now we're using this private key. We are going to generate a public key. So for this, I'm again going to be using OpenSSL. And OpenSSL is a Unix based, so you will need a Unix system. So you go RSA UTL, that's RSA utility. And what we want to do is encrypt. And we want the public key in, in key. And we want to use the public key that we just generated. I'm sorry, guys. So we are going to be using RSA. So first of all, we need to generate a public key. So for that, we use the private key. So we will give the private key as an argument after the in flag. So private.key. And we are trying to get out a public key. So pub out and we are going to call it public.key. OK, so there seems to be. OK, uh, I messed it up a little. Uh, I forgot to give the output. So you go out and then you use public.key. So it's asking me for a passphrase. And now it's writing the RSA key. And since the password was correct, we have a public key too. So if you see, now we have a public key and a private key. So we are going to encrypt our file using the public key. So we go open SSL and we go RSA UTL and we go encrypt and we can do pub in. So we are going to use the public key and we want to put the text.txt as the file to be encrypted. So text.txt. And what we want to output is an encrypted file. So encrypted.txt. OK, I call it open SLL. Let me go and edit that out now. Yeah, so that makes it a correct command. And now we have an encrypted file. So let's see. Alice and yep, encrypted.txt. So if you just cut that out, so we see it's a bunch of garbage and we really can't read it unless we decrypt it. So for decrypting the key, all we have to do is again use OpenSSL. Let's clear this out first. So OpenSSL and we are going to be using the RSA utility again. So RSA UTL, we're going to decrypt this time. So we go with the decrypt flag and then we are going to be giving the in key. And that is going to be the private key. And what we want to decrypt is encrypted.txt. And what we want to output it is as, let's say, plain text.txt. 
So it's going to ask me for my passphrase, which is my name. And I've entered the passphrase. And now we have a plain text.txt. Now, if we are to go in ls, we see that we have a plain text.txt out here, just replied info.txt. Now, let me just cat that out. So plain text.txt. So this is a random text file. And if we go up, we see that it was a bunch of garbage. And before that, it was a random text file. Now, you can also run this command called diff plain text.txt text.txt. So this will give you a difference in the text strings. So it's zero, so it gives you that's the difference. So both the files are the same, and that's how public key cryptography works and how symmetric key cryptography works. Okay, now moving ahead of cryptography, let's talk about certificates. Okay, so now that we're done with cryptography, let's talk about digital certificates. So what is a digital certificate? Well, a digital certificate is an electronic password that allows a person organization to exchange data securely over the internet using public key infrastructure. So digital certificate is also known as a public key certificate or an identity certificate. Now, digital certificates are a means by which consumers and businesses can utilize the security application of public key infrastructure. Public key infrastructure comprises of the technology to enable and uh, secure e-commerce and internet based communication. So what kind of security does a certificate provide? So firstly, it provides identification and authentication. The person or entities with whom we are communicating are really who they say they are. So that is proved by certificates. So then we have confidentiality. The information within the message or transaction is kept confidential. It may only be read and understood by the intended sender. Then there's integrity, there's non-repudiation. The sender cannot deny sending the message or transaction the receiver. We'll get to non-repudiation and I'll explain how non-repudiation comes into digital certificates. So digital certificates are actually issued by authorities who are business who make it their business to actually certify, certify people and their organization with digital certificates. Now you can see these on Google Chrome. Now let me just open Chrome for you guys and you can see it out here. You can see certificates and you can go into the issuer statements and you can go into all sorts of stuff. So you can see it's issued by Encrypt Authority X3. So that's an issuing authority for digital certificates. Now that was all about the theory of certificates. Let's go and see how you can create one. So to create a digital certificate, we are going to be using the open SSL tool again. So first of all, let me show you how to create a certificate. So we are going to be using the open SSL tool for that. So first of all, let me clear the screen out. So in this case, I'm going to generate a certificate authority certificate. So I'm doing an RSA key here to use inside the certificate. So first of all, I need to generate a private key. So to do that, as I had just showed you guys, we can use the open SSL tool. Uh, you go open SSL and gen RSA and we're going to use test three. Then we're going to out it and let's call it ca.key and we're going to use 4096 bits. So I'm doing an RSA key here to use inside the certificate. So I'm generating a private key and the private key is used as a part of the certificate. And there's a public key associated with the certificate. So you've got public and private key and data gets encrypted with the public key and then gets decrypted with the private key. So they are mathematically linked at the public and private key because you need one for the end of the communication the and the other for the other end of the communication. And they have to be linked so that the data that gets encrypted with one key gets to be decrypted with other key. So this is asking for a passphrase. And so I'm going to be giving my name as a passphrase. So that has generated the key for us. So now I'm going to generate the certificate itself. So I'm going to be using the open SSL utility. So first of all, you say open SSL and you say request so it'll be a new request and it's going to be an x509 request it's going to be valid for 365 days and let's see the key is going to be ca.key and we're going to output it into ca or let's call it edureka dot crt so this is a certificate that i'm producing in the name of the company that i'm working for so that is edureka so it says it's unable to load the private key let me just see is the private key existing. Uh, I had a previous private key, so let me just remove that. Does it have a CA dot key? Seems like I put the name differently. So let me just try that again. Open SSL. Then we do request. So we're requesting a new certificate. And it's going to be X509. 
and it's going to be there for 365 days and key is ca dot key apparently that's for it's call out here so and it's going to be out into edureka.crt let's see if that works so let's enter the passphrase so it's my name so now it's going to ask me a bunch of information that's going to be inside the certificate so let's say it's asking the country name again so let's put in the state okay so in uh, state province name some state so bangalore uh, locality let's say whitefield organization name is edureka unit name brain force common name let's leave that out email address let's leave that out too and we have our certificate so if you go and list out your files you'll see that there is a certificate called edureka.crt out here which is highlighted okay so now if you want to view this file you could always use the open ssl you could always use the open ssl uh, utility so you say you want to read an x059 request and you want it in text and what you want to see is edureka.crt okay so that is the certificate so you see that it has all the signature it has a signature algorithm it has all the information about the certificate and it's a signature issuer is CIN in state Bangalore in location Whitefield, Idareka Brainforce Validity. It has all sorts of information. So that was all about digital certificates, how who issues digital certificates, where are they useful? So this is basically non-repudiation. So if nobody can say it with this certificate, like if this certificate is included in some sort of a website, and that website tends to be suppose malicious and there's a complaint. Now the website can't go to a court of law and say they didn't know about this because the certificate that was included had their private key and the private key was only supposed to be known to the company. So that is non-repudiation. You just can't deny that you didn't do it. Okay, so that was all about certificate.